Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministry. As always, I am honored, I'm humbled to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for you being the great I am the awesome one, the unmoved mover, the holy other, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the ending. Oh God, you are indeed the sovereign one, the one who gives rise to himself. Lord God, we thank you now for how that you are omniscient, you are omnipotent, all power. Hallelujah. You are omnipresent, present everywhere at the same time except where you decide to withdraw yourself. And Father God, I pray now that you do not withdraw yourself from us. Oh God, take not thy Holy Spirit from us. But oh God, hallelujah, my God, in the name of Jesus, let your divine will be done. Oh God, lead us, direct us, order our steps. This we pray now, in Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, and Amen. As always, I thank God for all of our members. Amen. I thank you for your faithful support as well as, amen, those who have partnered with us. Amen. Not only here in the United States, but all of our well wishes, amen, across the world. We thank you for your unending support financially as well as your prayers and amen your in-house attendance. Uh, we don't take that lightly, as well as those who come out and work around, amen, the turf, keeping the ground and the building up. We praise God for all of you, your work, amen, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want to talk today from a thought. One of the, of the things that I guess sort of prompted me to talk about this issue is I'm really concerned um, as, as I look around, and I look at statistics, it's my understanding that just COVID alone around the world have claimed over 4 million that's a lot of people. Right here in the United States, it's my understanding that COVID have claimed over 600,000. That's a lot of people. And some of you know some of these people. And I want to encourage your heart today uh, to make the most of your minute. Life is so brief. Even if we live to 120 years, compared to eternity, life here on this earth is very brief. And I want you to keep in mind always that Jesus is coming. Uh, he's coming back for you one way or another. I tell, I tell people, this, this world is not my home. I'm looking forward to a home, a house, a city, not made by hand. Hallelujah. But eternal in the glory. And one of these days, all of those who have obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ can have that home. Well, as we talk today, I'm hoping that you will see fit to seize the moment and make the most of it. So vivid in my mind when someone told me about an individual who I've been knowing for years. They prepared to go to bed and it was my understanding as they got ready to get in the bed and turn to get in the bed, 
the twins, them turning to get in the bed, and the bed, they were dead. And when they hit the bed, they were already dead. So I'm trying to say something here. Uh, life is so brief. So I want to encourage you to make the most of each moment. Make the most of the life that God has given you. I want to read in your hearing our scripture lesson coming from two passages of scripture. James chapter 4 beginning at verse 13 and also St. John chapter 9 beginning at verse 4. Listen as we read James. It says come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there buy and sell and make a profit whereas you do not know what will happen on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. And I want you to, as I read this, I want you to imagine a kettle on the stove and steam is coming out of it. You see the steam come out, but after a while that steam, it evaporates. You don't see it anymore. And the writer here is trying to get us to see, get a vivid picture of how brief life can be. It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Rebellion against God with knowledge. Disobedience to God with knowledge. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Now, I believe that Jesus here was saying that there were things that he had to do. He called them working the works. Working the works. Now, Jesus has not called us to simply talk. You know, we have a lot of people that love to just talk. They make you empty promises. While they are talking, you know that there is nothing to what they are saying. Their words just fall flat because you know their history. You know. And it says, but Jesus wanted to do more than just talk or speak things, but to also do what are you doing with the moment that God has given you on this earth? Now, it's just us. Let's talk today. Let's come together. Let's reason together. 
I, I'm hoping that somewhere or another that these words will knock on the door of your heart. I'm hoping that they will find a place there in your living room, in your car where you, where you are riding along. And, and we can just talk and share one with the other. My goal today is to remind you of the brevity of life and prompt you to make the most of your time and to point you to the door of salvation in order for you to live a life of peace and jubilation with Christ Jesus beyond the grave. That's my desire. You know, God be my helper. I want to hear those welcoming words. Well done. But I don't just want to hear them for myself. I want to, I want you to hear them as well. We find in Job chapter 14, verse 1 through 5. Job began to express the brevity of a man's life. He says something of this nature. How frail is humanity. And remember now, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about the four million people that COVID has taken across the world. The 600,000 right here in the United States, not to mention the car accident, not to mention war, not to mention the flu and all other kinds of heart attacks and many other things, accidents. Life, life can be so brief. But God has given us some time. And I want you to think about it. What are you doing with the time that God has given you? Are you making the most of it? Job said, how frail is humanity? How short is life? How full of trouble? We blossom like a flower and then wither like a passing shadow. We quickly disappear. You have decided the length of our lives. Yes, God knows the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live. And we are not given a minute longer. I hope you got that. God knows our lives to the very moment. But we will not go a minute beyond what God has set. Are you making the most of your minutes? Think about yourself right now. Listen at this. Now you may have heard of the expression hit the ground running. Well, we encourage you today not to waste time but to make the most of it. You know, I'm surprised, I marvel at how many people stay in relationships year on and year out, hoping to marry when their significant other has shown them who they are and what they are about and is not about forming a committed marriage relationship. Many of you know some people like that. They're just wasting their time. The people have already shown them, woman, man, I'm not going to marry you. But you think you can change things. You think you can fix it. Just wasting your time, spending your wheels, spending your money on emptiness. And at the end of the day, what do you have? Broken promises. Oftentimes you saw the red flags. You ignored them. 
Perhaps it is time to cut your losses and move on. Your time is too precious to waste. You know, getting in a committed relationship too young can also be devastating as well. Let me say that again. Nowadays, there are so many people, so young, call themselves in a dedicated relationship. You know, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I didn't call myself having a little girlfriend until I was about ready to graduate from high school. And then that was a, a good friend. Because I said all, all the people were my friends. I didn't distinguish one from the other. We were, we were just, just friends. But let me tell you one of the dangers that can be call yourself getting into a dedicated relationship too early. Boys and girls, or even men and women, get caught in this and feel imprisoned because their significant other get all bent out of shape if you just smile or speak to someone else. People have gotten hurt behind things like that. Often a person who is so possessive, they, they become so possessive. I, I hope I'm talking to, to you today, and I hope you are listening. They become so possessive or overjealous, they tend to lead to becoming a spouse abuser. They tend to cut you off from family and friends and try to force you only to interact with them. <clears throat> when you are so young and so, you should be exploring, must exploring. You should have a, a freedom to talk, make, make friends and learn and grow and get your schooling, get your education, uh, get a job, have some income, so you won't be dependent on somebody else. You need to have your own ride, your own phone, your own clothes, your own money, your own house, your dwelling place. <clears throat> you need to have a sense of independence. Yet, you call you in a dedicated relationship. Can you smile at your friends? Can you talk to them? Got somebody monitoring your, your phone. All that's nonsense. Monitoring what you put on Facebook and ready to threaten somebody if they don't like what they see. You shouldn't have to go through things like that. You should live a, a, a life in accordance with your age and not be saddled down and can't have the freedom of a child. I remember a situation where a man had his house, had a woman locked down, couldn't call. She called, her phone was monitored. She had to break out of the house. When she broke out, he was in hot pursuit of her. The police had to intervene. It was a bad situation. So I'm saying, you may see these red flags now. You may ignore these red flags. But I'm sounding the alarm for you. The sad thing about it is that you saw the red flag go up early on in the relationship. But you, but you willingly ignored the red flag because you thought, I can fix it. That's right. I can fix it. I can fix it with some real good loving. I can fix it with some tender care. But you can't fix it. 
often you cannot fix it because the person's heart, the person's heart needs fixing. And you are not equipped to fix the person's heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 tells us the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows this? And who really knows how bad it is? But I want you to know God can see around corners. He knows how bad or good the heart is. When you see these red flags go up, you better pay them some attention. I remember a situation, y'all may have read about it in the news. Domestic situation. The man ended up stabbing the woman some 14 or more times. And left the children in the house. They became dehydrated over a period of days. With the mother laying there dead. I'm trying to sound the alarm. But the Bible tells us, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine the secret motives. Turn this whole relationship thing over to God. Let the Lord direct your path. I just did a premarital counseling with a couple. And I can say to the best of my knowledge, every step of the way, Prayer led them. Their steps were being ordered by the Lord. They didn't want to do anything without first praying about it and seeking God's face. Are you allowing God to lead you? Are you following God's footsteps? I give all people their due reward. That's what the Bible just tells us according to what their actions deserve. That's God. And that's another reason why I don't really worry about people because I know at the end of the day their lives are in the hands of a righteous judge. And God is going to do the right thing. By your loved ones and my loved ones, God is going to do the right thing. Are you, are you spending your time well? You making proper investment with the time that God has given you. Ephesians 5 and 16 teaches us be very careful how you live. That, that's, that's God's word. He's speaking to you, he's speaking to me. Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. That's God's word. God's word is directing us. Make the most of your moment. Make the most of every moment. Life is so brief. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, man, woman, boy, girl. You know whether you're being foolish or not. You know the sound advice that you were given. You were taught, many of you were taught better, you were trained better, and you were going against, amen, what you were taught, and you were throwing it to the wind. But guess what? I want you to know today that the things that you do today, the decisions that you make today will meet you down the road tomorrow. Let me say that again. The decisions you make today will meet you down the road tomorrow. And I'd rather hear you say it, I'm glad I obeyed rather than I wish I had. But understand what the will 
what the Lord's will is. God's word is trying to help us make the best use of our time by asking us to consider the ant. Isn't that something? Us humans can learn something from the ant. But that's what God's word tells us. Consider the ant in Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 11. We can take a, 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 a lesson from the ant. The Bible tells us, take a lesson from the ant, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor, or ruler to make them work. They labor hard all summer. Hallelujah. And, and let me just add this. There are seasons that we can work and make a difference. And oftentimes, you know that season. Uh, watch what the ant does in its season. Gathering food for the winter. But verse 9 says, but you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will take will attack you like an armed robber. Now check this out. How many hours a day do you think people spend watching TV? Well I did a little checking. On an average, Americans between the age or beginning at the age of 18 and older spend more than four hours a day watching TV and three hours and 45 minutes interacting on their smartphone. Wow, more than four hours watching TV? That is more than an average work day for many of us. Can we find better use of our precious time? Can we use some of that time developing meaningful relationships with each other rather than running each other down with criticism, whether it's warranted or not? Can we use some of that time feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and giving comfort to those that are grieving. Seeing that our time is so brief, can we use that moment fulfilling the purpose for which we were made? Now listen, when Adam was created, he was given responsibility in accordance to his abilities now listen to what Genesis 1, 26 through 27 tells us. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Have dominion. Now listen, God gave man dominion over land, sea, air, the birds, the reptiles, the animals. Now listen, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. I don't know how two men are going to get together and multiply. I don't know how two women are going to get together and multiply. It seems like something is, is, is out of whack there. But, 
what I'm trying to say is, are we in tune with the purpose for which God has made us? Are we wasting our time chasing personal pleasures as opposed to fulfilling the purpose for which God has called us and made us? In order to fulfill God's purpose for which I mean, we were designed, it takes a male and female coming together to bring about children and multiply on the earth. That's God's idea. God set the standard. He defined what marriage is. You know, as I, I think about this, so many of us are squandering our precious time away. We find in, in, in Revelation 4.11, he said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Thank you, Jesus. But thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We were created for God's pleasure. We were created to worship God, to praise God. How much time do we spend worshiping and praising the Lord our God? How much time do we spend doing that? If, a, if you make something and, and it doesn't perform for the purpose you made it, do you try to repurpose it? Or you destroy it and make something over? We find in Titus 2.14, it says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous, enthusiastic, Passionate of good works. God wanted to be about doing good works. He redeemed us for that purpose. Are we about doing good works that God has called us to do? Are we worshiping and praising him as God has set in motion? What are you doing with your precious moment? Are you squandering your time? You can't go and create more time. You can't give yourself extra minutes, an extra hour, an extra day, an extra month. You only have a certain amount that God has given to you. Are you making the most of it? We find in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a marvelous, a wonderful light. What are you doing with your moment? Are you, are you reading the handwriting on the wall? Are you, are you noticing the, the, the red flags that are going up? Are you spinning your wheels? Are, are, you, are you being affected by what I call the rocking chair syndrome? All you're doing is just going back and forward, back and forward, not making any progress. Have you been sitting on the pews 15 and 20 years and have not grown? Have you been in the same place in your relationship and have not grown? Have you not made any personal improvements in your life? Are you making the most of the moment that God has given you? As I'm about to close, I want to remind you of a man who undoubtedly thought he had more time. And how many people think they have all this time? But, but God ended up calling that man a fool. Please don't let that be you. We find in Luke chapter 12, verse 19 through 21, the man says, he said, I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up many years. He did well. He could have taken some of his goods and wealth and, and shared it. 
could have done some good in society. No, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, rat pack, store it up, me, myself, and I. No other is left. I've learned something. If you really want to get something, give. That worked for me. It worked for many others, too. He told himself, take it easy. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But, but look at this. The Bible says, but God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Brevity of time. Not spending his time wisely. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? All that you laid up, all that you've stored up, who's going to have all that? Did you spend your time wisely? Did you share? Did you feed somebody? Did you clothe somebody? Did you share a word of encouragement with anybody? Verse 21 goes on to say, so he, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. What's your spiritual bank account looking like these days? What's your spiritual bank account looking like these days? Is it depleted? Is it growing? As I prepare to close, let me ask you, are you making the most of your minutes? I want you to think about that. That's serious business. Are you living out the purpose for which God has made you? If you say, I do not know what my purpose is, you can start by praising and glorifying God. Start there. Start doing good deeds. God will reveal to you his purpose. Let me share a favorite poem with you written by the late Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, former president of Morehouse College. Some of you probably know that I really like this little poem. It says a lot. It's real short. It's called Just a Minute. Just a Minute. I have only just a minute. Only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a little minute. But eternity is in it. Thank you, Jesus. When you hear God's word, whatever state of mind you're in, just know that God loves you and showed how much he did on Calvary's cross as he hung there with his arms stretched out wide. And I say to you, whatever you do, humble yourself. Accept the direction that God is leading you. Remember your road to salvation. And your recovery to wholeness can start with repentance. Thank you, Jesus. And the mission of sin, receiving the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. And live a righteous life. In other words, we all must be born again. That's what Jesus said. Of water and of the Spirit. And Jesus ought to know because he said, I am the door. Thank you, Jesus. Will you surrender your will to Jesus today and stop procrastinating? Use your minute wisely. Please be mindful that Jesus is calling for all to be born again of water and of the spirit. I pray that we have said something that will bless you. For your continued growth in God's word, we have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. In-person worship on Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. And online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. And 
And I ask you to please do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share with your friends, amen, on Facebook and others. For more information on the plan of salvation, please feel free to call us at 678-759-8989. Let us pray. Gracious Father, O oh Lord our God, help us not to neglect to use our many lives. Help us to help others. Help us to prepare ourselves for the soon coming King. Which we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen.